Okay. So, hey, it's wonderful to be with you. I really appreciate you taking some time, obviously, on a busy day and a, a very yeah. important moment in your life. Yes. You're graduating tonight. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know how much of the background that you know. So I, I was um, down in Memphis last year and I had an opportunity to sit down with your your, your mom and she shared a lot about your story, mm -hmm. and your journey and, you know, just your experience overall with St. Jude. And it was just, I want to tell you, it's just such an incredible moving story. So thank you. Uh, appreciate you and appreciate your family sharing that story and and obviously carrying that you know the passion for saint jude onward mm -hmm. um you, you know even as you go into that next chapter of your life which is happening yeah. you know, right before our very eyes so why don't well, you know you just start with um filling me in on a little bit of what's happened over the past year since i met with your mom since i already know a good deal of your background story mm -hmm. and i'll get a little perspective from you uh, you know, specifically focusing on, on, you know, one of the big things that was ahead of you was the race and continuing yes. to fundraise as a St. Jude hero. So yes. why don't you give me a little background on what's occurred over the past year? So over the past year, I've been, I joined a St. Jude Leadership Society, which was a big thing I did. And basically what that was is I fundraised for St. Jude and we fundraised up $2,500 or I fundraised $2,500 as a part of the program. And being able to do that and give back was so amazing. And then I've been a part of, I actually got my Eagle Scout as well. And then obviously the big thing is I ran a full 26.2 mile marathon. Now you had done several half marathon marathons yes. before. Why did you decide to continue this journey and go for the full marathon? I wanted to show the kids at the hospital that anything was possible. And that if you put your mind to it, you can do achieve anything you want. Because a lot of when I was at treatment, that was some of the stuff that helped inspire me to continue fighting to for me to achieve diff my dreams. And I wanted to hope, and I hope that uh, the people, the kids of St. Jude saw that as an inspiration that, you know, anything is possible. And that just because you had cancer doesn't mean you can't do anything. Yeah, Tyler, you've been in their shoes, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you feel that you can connect on a different level to those that that are going to be and, and continue to fight the journey that you've already, you know, you've already shown uh, can bring victory and can bring success, yeah. and triumph over cancer? Mm -hmm. How do you feel that helps you connect with them? I think it helps me have a deeper understanding of like what they went through. Because as someone who's been a patient, I understand, you know, there's a lot of pain, it's a lot of struggle, especially, you know, there are some days where it's hard to keep fighting. And there are some days where you're just broken down, tired and exhausted. And I think that's kind of what's helped me have that drive is just saying, you know, I've done this, you know, I'm not, I'm used to this, I can continue going and that there's a light at the end of the tunnel, just like there's a finish line at the end of a race. You know, there's always something to look forward to. And I just have a goal set in mind. And I, hope that translates with them as well, because a lot of it was just from my journey throughout treatment. I knew that there was a finish line and I just had to keep on fighting to get there. That's a beautiful way to look at it because mm -hmm. you know, running is something that you took up, you know, years yeah. after your treatment. Yes. How is that, you know, journey of running given you strength and perspective on what you dealt with, you know, as, as a younger child? It's helped me see just how much, it's helped me just see how much growth there is and just how much potential there is and that you know especially coming from a St. Jude patient you know I was able to build a community with running I was able to make so many good friends and I was able to become something that I've always dreamed about and I think running has really changed my perspective on what's possible it's changed my perspective on what I can do and what I'm able to do and has helped me grow and has helped me improve and learn more about the world around me and just being able to share that experience with people and being able to share and show that you can do more than what you think you're capable of. You know, Tyler, speaking mm -hmm. of perspective, I think, you know, it's, it's very meaningful that we're meeting to talk on this yeah. day as well, Thank because you. this is a meaningful day for you. Yeah. It's graduation. So tell me about what's happening today and how you're feeling on this moment right now. So, I mean, I'm having graduation today and earlier today, I actually was at my rehearsal and it's just excitement. You know, I've been looking forward to this for my entire life. And now that it's finally here, it's just pure excitement, pure joy. I get to spend it with the best people in my life and we get to share this moment together. You know, in many respects, Tyler, there were there were years of your life that you didn't have the quote unquote normal childhood experience, yes. right? Yeah. You had to spend... Um, 
you know, years and months and years, you know, in, in you know, hospitals and, and dealing with this. Mm -hmm. What kind of perspective do you have now entering into, you know, more of, of a perspective of adulthood is what's next for you? What does it make you kind of feel looking ahead now with the experience that you've had? I th it shows me not to take life for granted and to take op every opportunity available because, you know, you go through hardships and you go through everything and there's like, hardships expected to come. But the biggest thing is that you just keep on fighting and working towards your goal. And I know that if I keep that mindset and keep how, you know, basically my treatment has taught me and what my journey has taught me is that you there's always light at the end of the tunnel. So if I just keep on looking towards that light, I'll always reach it. Tyler, talk to me about some of your goals. What yes. do you have going forward? You've got such a bright future. Yeah. What so, is next? My, one of my biggest goals is that I want to eventually start my own company for, um, I want to do mechanical engineering and I want to minor in neuroscience so I can eventually start my own company and do nervous system development for prosthetics. Incredible. Where you, You're very specific on your goals. Is there any reason where that's come from? What has kind of driven you in that direction? So I've had a, so especially being at the hospital, you know, there's a lot of things people lose and sometimes that's a limb. And I was thinking about it and especially having a close friend who's lost a limb, how, you know, burdensome that can be and how, just how, you know, you want to try and feel as normal as possible. And I want to hopefully help people regain that sense of normalcy by building themselves, by building them a limb, they, you know, acts like their lost arm. That way they don't lose anything. You know, they go through all this and I don't think that they should lose that as a part of it. It's incredible. So your experiences, you know, as a child back at St. Jude, still shaping, you know, what you intend to do to change the world going yeah. forward. Uh, a few things too, speaking about, you know, changing the world. Um, if you can just kind of sum up your experience, mm -hmm. from your memory and your perspective at St. Jude and how it's made you who you are today. If I were to sum it up, I'd say hardships combined with love which has helped me grow and has shown me how hope and how love can save you even in your darkest times. And just that St. Jude really provides a light on the dark. And it's a great way to put it because no one would ever wish or hope to deal with, you yeah. know, what you had to deal with. How do you have such positive images and, and fond memories of what St. Jude has done for you at this point? Well, it's all the people who help support St. Jude. I mean, every single one of them, all their support, all their love and all their hope is really what's guided me and has helped me because seeing how much they love and support me has really shown how much of an amazing cause this is and how, you know, they helped save my life. You know, they were the reasons, the donors and the people who work towards, you know, research and the doctors, all of them, they showed me hope and they showed me every day that, you know, you could always look towards a bright future. And that even if you're going through something hard, you know, we still support and love you for it. Tyler, are you going to continue to support St. Jude, you know, the rest of, of your life? Is it, it's in your yes. heart? Yeah. For the rest of my life, I'll always support St. Jude. How do you intend to do that? What What's next for you? So I'm so right now I'm going to the University of Alabama. So what my kind of like goal is, is that when I start my own company and when I get out of Alabama and my goal is to do partnerships with St. Jude because I want to be able to build prosthetic limbs for St. Jude. And then I also want to do like events and stuff to help continue to fundraise for St. Jude because of how much they've given me. I hope to give as much back as I can. You mentioned some of the success that you've had, not only completing the races, but fundraising. Yeah. Tell me where you've kind of been with the fundraising mm -hmm. efforts and how it's grown over time. So we started back, I think about 2012 when my niece or my, um, cousin was diagnosed with cancer. And then that was kind of when we first started getting into it. And over the years, it's just been developing and growing as we've been, you know, reaching out, getting more people to join us and t basically sharing my story, sharing her story about what St. Jude means to us. And that's really helped us fundraise. And then this past year, I started my, uh, I did a bake sale at my track meet and I actually set up the entire thing myself and we fundraised 2,500. And so the goal is just to keep on moving forward with that and just keep on building and expanding and sharing my story with whoever I meet. That's just incredible. So tell me a little bit more about the race experience and the marathon itself, because <laughs> to complete a marathon, that's just a monumental challenge and you did it. Yes. So the marathon is definitely, it's, it's a struggle. I mean, you're running 26.2 miles with a, you know, fast pace. I think my 
pace was like eight something, eight minutes for about the first 16-ish miles. That's then incredible. we slowed down a little bit because we were we were getting tired. <laughs> but That's it's definitely the, the race experience is that it's a struggle. It's a challenge. You know, you're running 26 mi miles. You know, the first couple miles, you'll feel good. And then later on, as you start going through it, you start feeling the struggle. And then about mile 18, you're, you know, you're, you feel like you're going to collapse. But I definitely think that, you know, you know, you do all this training and you do all this, you build up to this point and then you're like, I can finish this. I can do it. And you just got to, and that mindset is just there. So like after all this training, you're just like, all right, I got to finish. And you, so you just sprint it out the last little bit. You're like, all right, we're almost there. <laughs> so you got to carry something a little extra in your heart though, as well, for those, yes. as you mentioned before, for those yes. kids that are still battling yes. and in their battle against cancer, did that, did that come to your mind while you were racing? It came every single mile. So um, I actually raced with um, names on my arm. On my right arm, I had people who were survivors. And then on my left, I had people who had fallen and who uh, didn't make it through the journey. And so every mile, you know, I did one for each mile. And every mile, I would remind myself well, why I'm running this and also, you know, what my reason is. You know, they were my reason for I was running this and that every single mile was for them. You know, they would run it. Basically, they were running the marathon with me propelling you through to the finish line weren't they yes <laughs> propelling me through the finish line and collapsing at the end <laughs> i i get it i know exactly how you felt uh, you know crossing that finish line uh when i talked to your mom it was well before the race last year but she said something that was striking to me mm -hmm. and her exact words were i have no doubt in my mind that he's going to finish i have no doubt that i'm going to get to stand there and watch him cross the finish line mm -hmm. I'd like for your family uh, can you repeat that? It was hard yeah. to hear. What yeah. was that like for your family? Because they believed in you the whole time. So they said they have no doubt they're going to sit there or they're going to be there to mm -hmm. watch you cross the finish line. What was it like to 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 follow through on that dream and to do that in front of your family and your friends and your support? Uh, I was crying. I was. It was so much joy, excitement, and especially from their perspective, it was a monument. It was a moment. You know, it was one of the biggest feats. You know, someone can do and being able to share that experience with my family and them seeing across me across the finish line was just showing how far I've come and how, you know, how much I've endured and just being able to see the progression and seeing the, how much love and support everyone has given me has really basically it showed how it showed the fight I had left in me and the amazing, you know, the challenge it was, you know, it was a struggle, but they loved and support me and being part of that moment was just amazing. You'll never forget that for sure. No, I'll never forget that moment. I remember I was, uh, when I crossed the finish line, my mom gave me a big hug and she was like, you did it, buddy. Well-deserved too. <laughs> you know, I like how you kind of likened it to your journey, you know, defeating cancer mm -hmm. and being in that opportunity to say that you have triumphed over it. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk a little bit broader about St. Jude. And obviously your your heart is mm -hmm. is so dedicated to the cause Mm -hmm. uh, back in 1962, as you well know, when St. Yes. Jude was opened, we weren't having the success that we're having today. Uh, as you very well know as well, you know, acute lymphoblastemia yeah. was a survival rate of 4%. Yes. <laughs> you are an example of somebody that has said, we have now taken those numbers and turned them into success. What would you say to St. Jude today about the gratitude you have for where you are right now? I would just tell them how much of a hope and inspiration they are. I mean, it's hard to describe in words exactly how amazing their work is because they just continue to work with 110%, 120% every single day. They give it their all and they realize that, you know, these are numbers that we are going to bring up and that it's a guarantee. And just seeing that it's just, I would, I just want to tell them how much I love and support them for everything they've done for me. Cause I know I wouldn't be here without them. And if they, you know, all the work they've done since 1962 has really shown and shown itself today. And I just want to thank them so much for never giving up. And that's, you know, the whole dream started with Danny Thomas yes. as well. And it's a very important connection to what we do here in Toledo with our local campaign, because Danny Thomas grew up here in Toledo. So mm -hmm. um, we see a lot of um, the mission mm -hmm. of what St. Jude does now continue on uh, through the work down in Memphis, what would you say to um, 
Danny Thomas, who had a bold dream, similar to bold dreams that you may have right now about what you want to do in the future. What would you say to him today, over well, 60 I, years after he opened the hospital, about the work that he did? I would give him a hug and I would say, I love you so much and thank you for everything you've done for me. Because without you, this dream wouldn't be here. And without you, I wouldn't be here. That's incredible. That is. Tonight at graduation, <laughs> what's going to be going through your mind when you're walking across the stage? Um, it's going to be excitement, love, support. And I'll, the biggest thing is St. Jude will be going through my mind and I'll be thanking them for how much they've done for me. It's, and I'll be thinking, damn it, I'll actually be in a church, so I'll be praying to, I'll be thanking Danny Thomas for all the love and support he's given me. That's wonderful. Very, very wise of you to have that perspective and and just the, the thanks and gratitude. Um, anything else that you could think of that you would like to say at this point that you think that I've missed or maybe haven't thought of that you just... It's on your heart or your mind that you'd like to share about your experience. Biggest thing that I'd probably say is just St. Jude, like I said, is just a huge hope and inspiration and in that no matter what, all the kids, you know, I hope that every single one of them just continues fighting like I was. And I hope that they continue moving forward through today and that I hope that they get to see the light of the tunnel like I did. It's wonderful. So you'll be back at the start line next year, right? Yeah, <laughs> I will be actually. What's that? I will be. I don't know about the marathon next year, just because yes. college and all that. So I'd have to see, but uh, definitely the half. Yeah, I think so. it's a it's um a big commitment to to yeah. do the whole, as you certainly learned. It's not just uh, it's not doing two half marathons and putting them together. It takes much more to do that. So well. <laughs> Tyler, it's it's going to be beautiful to watch um, what you do next and uh, your career and, you know, how you intend to continue to give back to St. Jude. Let me just tell you, it's very inspiring. So uh, we're happy not only that you've chosen to share your story about um, what you've done and how you've triumphed over, you know, cancer in the past, but how you continue to, to look forward to opportunities to give back and to um, show that ultimate gratitude that St. That Jude has given to you and um, you're, you're just full of hope and joy, and I really appreciate that. Well, thanks for having me. And like I said, everyone has helped me. So it's, it's just it's such an inspiration and such an honor to be a part of this. And I hope that people, you know, when they see this, that they get to experience the same hope and joy that I do and that they help support St. Jude because that's all that matters is just yeah. making sure that everyone just feels hope and joy. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that's all I had for you. You've just been just a, a phenomenal, um, well put together interview that's really going to help us, you know, very much with our campaign. Mm -hmm. I wish you the best of luck tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm really excited. Thank you. Uh, you'll be in our thoughts and prayers uh, going forward tonight, but also with what's next for you. Thank you.